What did you take out of the first game or anything? Um, I think getting off the good starts. I think I'm um, having a defensive mindset. We talked about it here today. Team have a chance to play against the team. Actually, feel it. See how fast they play, how hard they play. I'm um, a constant movement. Um, it's tough to just show them being able to walk through it. You got to actually feel it. And I thought the second quarter, I think, kind of you know figure out what they were trying to do with the color, the speed of the game, did a good job. So both of those last two quarters can carry over to the right. With Golden State playing small as much as they did, obviously we didn't see Isaiah play. So with Memphis, they like to play more traditional style right. and stuff like that. Is this a game where on the second unit he might play a little bit more? He's definitely going to play against And with Nico back, what does that change for the second unit? Um, he'll play just as a play. Um, we'll probably play 10 guys, you know, because Isaiah's like got to be smart and um, make sure we're not going to play any guys. They still make the season. We'll play every day or every other day for a while. So just got to be smart about it. Andrew on Zoom, you can go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Ty. Um, you know, Eric the other night talked about after Golden State how he feels like this is a really good fit for him with you guys in a number of ways, offensively, defensively, just feeling like he's at home. When, when did you start to feel like in the preseason that, that he was really maybe starting to find his way, find his rhythm, feel comfortable in this surrounding? Um, I don't know. I think, you know, once the games you know, were finished, and uh, like I said, he worked hard every day to get in better shape and just try to pick up what we're trying to do. And um, I think in those practices where we had 10 days just to work on, you know, defensive things, offensive things, it really, really was good for us. I think scrimmaging every day really helped him out. I didn't understand what we were trying to do offensively. But his pace and the way he attacks and gets downhill um, changes our team tremendously. You, in terms of that getting downhill, do you give him any sort of goal or prod him to sort of get to the paint a certain amount of times just to sort of make sure he's always focused on getting to the rim. Yeah, I mean anytime we come down the sets and transition, you know, our being to talk to go away and screen for PG and Reggie and Luke and he always has the ability to go one on one anytime he sees that. So anytime we can attack early one on one that and not the run offense. But we need him to if this man turns his head, looks around, DJ, get to the paint, you know, make plays for Zoom himself and Mark so guys get a shot. So he did, a, he did a great work last game. Thank you. Thank you. You mentioned the other day, we're talking about Chauncey. I've seen that. What are you talking about? What it's like to see the fact that it started as a coach? Yeah, it was good. Just seeing his family over there. Um, he's a lot more calmer to coach than he was the player. You know, that, that's for sure. But um, just been seeing him you know, get out there and um, you know, have his first game. And he was excited. He's also excited for first game of so now he played at night. Um, we talked a little bit earlier today, so just happy for him, just happy, happy for him. So, you know, for him to keep going and, you know, kind of figure this thing out. You mentioned that your first, like, 10 games or so, <laughs> you think that you're right this Yeah. You don't think that his experience is anything, or do you have advice for him to have a right? Um, he probably will admit it, but he has to be a little nervous. <laughs> you know, just doing something for the first time, you know, it's always difficult. And, um, but he's put the work in, you know, he's got to be ready. And um, like I say, it's always going to be better. So I'm just happy for him that he had a chance to, to do this this year. It's uh, opening night tonight. You didn't really get to have him last season. And I've been kind of a blur. Is there any kind of extra excitement you're having as your first opening night as well as a close or anything like that? Yeah, it's just very exciting. They get our fans back in the building. Um, for us to play our first home game, you know, um, you know, the summer's over and now we're back. So just very exciting. Anytime the season starts, it's always an exciting time. We just get a chance to see what your team is like, you know, what we need to get better at, what we can keep, you know, continue to keep building on. And so I'm very excited for tonight. Go to Claudia on Zoom. Hey, Ty. Um, I don't know if someone I have asked you this question, but i just kind of curious, you know, how is the relationship of your guys in the locker room and how important is that to have success during the regular season? Oh, the relationships are great. You know, I think the guys are, you know, really getting along. I think, you know, the trip to San Diego for those five or six days and just, you know, going golf and going fishing, you know, just doing team camaraderie. Those guys being around each other for six days, I think, is really good. So, um, like I said, relationships are really good right now. You know, we want to continue that. You know, we want to build the right culture and you know, make sure guys are you know, all on the same page. Guys are always sharing for each other. Guys stick together no matter how, how tough things may get. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so along those lines of yesterday, like 80 and Dwight, guys, like a little exchange on the like, events. But like, during the like, game, I guess, 
with the, you know, emotions high and then they're down to like, how often do those kind of things happen sometimes in other ways? Are those normal at all? I don't know, I don't know, you know, but I mean, anytime you compete, you always want to win. So it's not a bad thing. You know, it's not like they're not close or, you know, good friends. Sometimes they're in the heat of battle, anything can happen. So, um, you know, in my 23, 24 years of the NBA, you know, it's common for that to happen. You know, so these are the most times you want to have it on the moment where, you know, it happens and you just move on. You know, so it's not a big deal. Obviously, it was, uh, he's such a great three point shooter, and now with Jock, he gets to the rim. Pretty much as relentless as anyone else in the league. How tough is it to kind of go from that defensively on Thursday to now you got to deal with this many problems? Well, we got to adjust to it. You know, every night, every night you have tough covers and you know great players. So we know Stanley can make you know 12, 13 threes in the game. John Brown, I think he had 11, 12, you know, layups, I think, last game. So we got to do a good job protecting the frame. We got to show why it is to show a crowd. So he just can't get down. He knows he just want to. And um, you know, it's going to be a team. It's going to be a team that not one player. You know, we understand that. So we got to go back to being everybody has to be in the right place at the right time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.